The trial that could determine the future of Florida education policy has ended in Tallahassee. Citizens for Strong Schools v. Board challenges 20 years of controversial education reform set in motion during the Jeb Bush administration, such as school grades, standardized testing, and charter schools. Education watchers dispute the validity of using standardized test scores to measure student achievement as research overwhelmingly links test scores to socioeconomic levels. Citizens for Strong Schools and the Lashua Base Education advocacy group filed the suit in 2009, but the state has delayed the trial for years using several procedural motions. The suit is based on the 1998 constitutional amendment describing education as a paramount duty of the state to provide a high quality education for all students. Kim Cook, a first grade teacher from Alachua County, gave a riveting testimony during which she explained that some of her students come to her without ever having been read to or had meaningful conversation with their parents. These are children whose basic needs are not being met. They've been neglected, abused, some of which have never even held a pencil or crayon. She said that some of her students have disabilities and require extra attention about behavioral issues in children who've experienced trauma and act out by throwing chairs or striking other students. But there's no funding for the needed behavioral therapist. There are no social workers at her school either. The school psychologist comes only once a week and spends most of her time testing. She also noted that the needs of children with disabilities are not being met. Asked whether she had children of her own with disabilities attending public schools, she replied, yes, she did. But she and her husband had to hire their own specialist to meet his needs far beyond the resources of parents living in poverty. Ms. Cook testified that she spends $500 of her own money every year in food, clothes, field trip fees, and even pencils and erasers for her students. And that at her school, they're trying to raise money by winning a contest to replace the rusting jungle gym, or writing grants to fund field trips that otherwise her children would never be able to experience the zoo or the natural history museum. That their computers had been donated by a prison that was upgrading to newer ones. That the air conditioning in her classroom didn't work and that she had to go out and buy fans and that the windows in her room don't even open. She was once rated unsatisfactory, along with several of her colleagues, based on test scores of students that didn't even attend their school. The state's private attorney asked Ms. Cook whether she had conducted any of the research that she had cited herself. Ms. Cook replied that the research is readily available and that she reads it extensively. Studies show how nutrition, sleep deprivation, and lack of supported adult relationships are common and cause greater stress in children living in poverty. Many of these students live in transient households. They have limited access to outdoor play and fresh food. They're more likely to be homeless and have a close family member or friend killed due to gun violence. These children require additional wraparound services, such as school counselors, behavioral specialists, and after-school activities, all of which have been recently cut due to budget constraints. Children who live in poverty are more likely to suffer trauma, and their trauma tends to be more severe. Chronic childhood trauma has been linked to depression, anxiety, lack of sleep, problems communicating, and even hostility and aggressive behavior, all of which affect a child's performance in school and their teacher's ability to reach them. Studies show that children need unstructured playtime and that early playtime learning develops creativity, problem-solving skills, and empathy. The defense mentioned that the county has the authority to raise its own funds, to which Ms. Cook replied that they had already done that once, and she was uncertain whether Alachua voters would approve another tax. Ms. Cook mentioned that the value-added model by which all teachers are evaluated is junk science, and that if children of lower socioeconomic status are to be held to the same standards, they should be given the resources they need to succeed. The plaintiff's attorney also called Susan Bowles, a kindergarten teacher at Lawton Childs Elementary, also in Alachua County. Ms. Bowles gained national media attention in 2014 when she refused to administer a standardized test. She testified that many of her children live in high-crime neighborhoods, that low-performing children have their arts and playtime cut in order to make more time for extra math and reading. These are the children that tend to have more behavioral issues and attention span disorders. She said her students need more time for play and individualized attention. She said that all children under her care were succeeding at their own rate. Ms. Bowles testified that they had recently lost their behavior specialist, which had severely impacted her school. 
She said that yes, they had textbooks, but the standards have since changed and that the teachers have had to go out and buy their own textbooks. The state's mandate to computer test her kindergarten students has been short on resources and has resulted in too many difficulties administering those tests to continue. She was threatened with firing for insubordination if she did not continue administering the test. But despite tremendous pressure, she refused. She said the state could continue raising standards all at once, but we have to remember, they're still little children. Ms. Bowles noted that there were no early childhood specialists on the committee that created the state standards. That other tests were also developmentally inappropriate for kindergartners, and that the achievement gap between socioeconomic levels was substantial. Ms. Bowles agreed that children do need to be assessed and that she does it all the time according to their needs, like teachers have done through the years. The state questioned whether Ms. Bowles had ever sat on a school board to determine whether she was even qualified to have an opinion on early childhood development. She reminded him that she serves in the position most qualified to determine early childhood development. She said that she wanted to see more resources devoted to developing children's social and emotional needs, developing people who can get along with others, who are kind, understand how to work in a group setting. We need healthy children. In his closing arguments, the state's attorney claimed that the state had worked really hard to provide a high quality education for all students given the recent economic downturn. What he failed to mention was the billion dollars in corporate tax cuts and incentives the governor has been promoting for the last two years. He showed how Florida minority students have made extraordinary gains nationally, but the judge interrupted him to remind him that according to the state's own standards, many students were still falling behind in schools that had been failing for years and that the court was astounded to hear that a school could remain in the status for such a long period of time. The state went on to characterize the plaintiff's grievances as insignificant compared to Miami-Dade, whose huge minority populations are making nationally acclaimed learning gains. Education watchers would like to point out that this is more of a case of Miami-Dade teachers succeeding in spite of, not as a result of, state funding. The state's attorney went on to surmise that the reason Florida schools and children were failing was not because of the Department of Education or the legislature, but by the fault of classroom teachers and school leadership. That's right. He blamed the teachers. Throughout the trial, Judge Reynolds seemed sympathetic to the plaintiff's cause and deferential to the teacher witnesses, but he made it clear that the judicial branch should only interfere in the functions of the legislative branch under very limited circumstances. Teachers and parents around the state are hoping this is one such occasion. This has been From the Desk Of. I'm Enrique Valoira.